So we are now into 2024, nearly a full seven years since the release of the Nintendo Switch, and the console's eShop is undoubtedly in its worst state ever. Worse, some might argue, than the Nintendo Wii's eShop back in the day, and there's been little to no effort from Nintendo to improve it. In short, it's a slow clunky mess, an absolute chore to navigate, and finding a decent game is made all the more unbearable by the unfathomable amounts of scam games and low quality shovelware shite. Now while other channels are focused on giving the top game recommendations for the year ahead, I'm instead going to be dedicating this video to giving you a roundup on all of the publishers, which in my opinion, you should be avoiding in 2024 to hopefully save you a bit of cash and help you make quick decisions on games from publishers that really don't deserve your support or money. Now if you've been watching my content for a while, many of these names will be familiar to you, but I'm not going to be going into depth on the publishers in this one. For that, I recommend checking out my dedicated videos on them, such as my recent Switch Scam Game Saga Continues video, and you'll find all of these videos within my Scam Games playlist. This video though is more of a who's who of shitty Switch publishers all in one place, so that if you see any of the names that I'm about to mention, you can immediately dodge those bullets. So let's kick things off then with the scammers, and first up of course we have Midnight Works, the OG dogs of the Switch scam game ring, who like many of its members are based out of Moldova. But the first foray into the Switch eShop was with Cop Car Police Simulator Chase, a game which still remains available to buy to this day, complete with the same fake screenshots and deceptive description. Rather surprisingly though, it appears that none of the games that Midnight Works have published actually remain on either the US or UK eShops, and it could be that Nintendo would become aware of the shady tactics and have blacklisted them, or more likely, and what I believe to be the case, is that they're trying to actually divert attention away from themselves after drawing it not just from myself, but other big outlets such as Nintendo Life. And like several other publishers that I'm about to mention, they're doing this by not only removing some of the games, but also shifting some of their other titles across the new publishing names. Erlano, for example, is the new publishing name that Midnight Works is now going by, and the second publisher on our list that you need to be avoiding. But here is where you'll find several games which I've covered on the channel previously published under Midnight Works, including Prison Life Simulator, Deep Space Action Fire, and Tales of Shinobi. Now our third publisher is Insta Marketing and Game, a subsidiary of Midnight Works, who much like the parent company have either removed or shifted the most notable titles to a new publishing name, but they're responsible for several scam games and trash titles such as Demolished Derby Nitro, Motorcycle Driving Simulator and Falling Elevator, all of which are now being published under Publish Me, the fourth publisher on our list that you need to be avoiding. Of all of the scam game publishers this year though, one stands above all when it comes to the sheer number of shitty games that have been spaffed out onto the eShop, and that is VG Games, who are otherwise known as West Connection in the US. These guys published a whopping 35 games throughout 2023, including Shark Attack Fish Predator, Infected Run to Survive and Gangster Live Criminal Untold but they've recently shifted a whole bunch of their titles to a brand new publishing name known as Tester Gamer Creations. Now our next few publishers have not yet abandoned ship on their original publishing names, but I expect it's only a matter of time before they do so. But first up we have Desvault Games, responsible for such gems as Mum Simulator 2023, Subway Simulator and the fantastically bad Raccoon Adventure Simulator. Next, we have Go Game Console Publisher, who put out a whole heap of shit, including the asset flip Urjet Fighter Sky Dominators and Beat Them Up, another game which basically just uses the game template, which comes with the Unity asset Universal Fighting Engine. And finally, we have Success Games, 
the latest member of the eShop Scam Ring, who much like the others have so far put out a bunch of simulator games as well as Jet Ski Mania, a game whose eShop trailer is probably the most ridiculous misinterpretation of in-game visuals that I've ever seen. And they've already kicked things off this year with Warzone Chronicles Virtual Warfare Shooter, the worst zombie survival game that I've ever played in my life. But the administrator of this publisher is none other than Victor Bivol, one of the founding forefathers of Midnight Works. So that about gets the scammers out of the way, but what of the other publishers that you should be avoiding? Well, I'm going to be skipping out all of the hentai game publishers because if that's your bag, that's your bag. But the publishers that I'm about to mention aren't putting out scam games per se, but the quality of the games leave a lot to be expected to say the least. And in many cases, their games are just asset flips which take Unity game templates and simply port them to the Switch with little to no effort put into actually modifying them to create any kind of original content. First up though, we have one of my personal favourites, Max Interactive Studio, a publisher who recently tried a copyright takedown on one of my videos on them for calling them out on the bullshit, but who have previously published several asset flips such as Little Squire's Quest, Ace Invaders and of course Max 2 Reloaded, one of three existing versions on the eShop of the notorious asset flip Hammer 2 Reloaded. Next, we have Demency Games, another publisher shitting out low quality simulator titles and one who recently put out a horrendous switch port of a browser based game called Humvee Assault, a truly terrible game and not a publisher that I would be supporting this year. We also have Random Spin Games, responsible for some absolute travesties including Disco Cannon Airlines and the not so funny funny truck but again a whole bunch of low quality indie tiles on offer here. And our penultimate publisher is Entity3, who is pretty much the new Pixarts for those of you who have been with the channel for a while, and while you're at it you may as well add those jokers as well as Kissler Studios to your list of must avoids. But Entity3 have been absolutely flooding the eShop recently with asset flips of every low budget mobile tile that they can get their hands on. Finally, we have Nerd Games, a publisher who has ported several horrendous Terralunka games from Steam to the Switch, including Cyborg Invasion Shooter 3 and Soulsland, the Souls like without any soul, but another publisher putting out a bunch of shite and one that is best avoided. So there you have it, a nice little list of publishers for you who in my opinion don't deserve a penny from you. And I had considered putting Red Deer Games on the list, but I feel that publisher warrants a dedicated video for another time. But were you aware of these publishers? Have you already been avoiding the games? Or have you in fact bought one and actually enjoyed it? And do you know of any other publishers that I may perhaps have missed that you can recommend steering clear of? Let me know down in the comments section below. If this video helped you out though, Drop a like and consider subscribing to the channel for more Nintendo Switch content. But for now, as always, thanks to the patrons of the channel for their ongoing support and to you the viewers for watching. And until next time, take care of yourselves and game on.